we're back after a hiatus. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh my god. <laughs> it's still whacked though. Yeah. I'm high. It is it is good. It is good. We're gonna continue our series on Saints of Yore. Oh I think is what we called it. Your what's yours? <laughs> or is your mine. your saints, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> What's of your is uh, is yours. The, <laughs> the cloud of witnesses, your Hallelujah. cloud of witnesses. Coming to you from your cloud of witnesses of your. Live. Live. And direct. <laughs> <laughs> this is the director. So uh, as part of the usual, um, we're going to start off with some recommendations. Take it away, Matt. Oh my God, I got to tell you people. If you haven't connected with some vintage Toronto blessing material, <laughs> why, where have you been? <laughs> I, I kid you not. Uh, I've been getting lit again off of something I've been drinking from for like more than a decade. Just the old John Scotland at Toronto in like 95 video. You know, usually we do a book and a music <laughs> recommendation, but this video is all that <laughs> rolled up into one. And more. All that and a bag of bliss. <laughs> Roll up. So how do you find this, you might be asking yourself. You go on YouTube and you just type in John Scotland Toronto Blessing. And uh, I think it's the second video that comes up because it just, oh, the title of the video is just Toronto Blessing. Mm. And this is the stuff, you know, it's so hard to find any of the original footage from the old days of Toronto because it was so whacked. It's like, have you ever been so whacked that later on you're like, I don't know if I should have been that whacked. <laughs> like, have you ever gotten that high that later on you're kind of embarrassed? Well, it's that kind of footage. But actually, there's so much heavenly bliss on it. And, and for you preachers out there, it's like gospel glory preaching 101. <laughs> like how to attempt to minister on when you're absolutely slammed sometimes you have to go back to the roots yeah and it really is like this stuff was like the portal of glory for north america's whack awakening of course that's jesus uh but jesus was really revealing himself in toronto in 90 whatever's it was and so anyway that's my recommendation for the week super good look up toronto blessing john scotland <laughs> on youtube it's a book and music all rolled up into one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> so, speaking this, of rolled into one, yes, yes. <laughs> we are going to continue our Saints of Yours <laughs> series uh, with St. <laughs> Patrick. There is so much glory on St. Patrick, and we've been excited to unpack his life ever since St. Patrick's Day. That's uh, taken us a little bit now. It's been over a month since we celebrated that holiday. But um, Yeah, we said, you know, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Why don't we do St. Patrick? <laughs> so here we are, one month later, <laughs> catching up. <laughs> but uh, anyway, if you haven't looked into St. Patrick, let's just take a big old drink off of St. Patrick today. Hallelujah. The glory that he walked in and what we can learn from and what we can walk in. Like mm. we've said before, any of these saints that we're looking into, we started with St. Anthony and we're going to kind of move down the timeline of history. Uh, so St. Anthony was one of the earliest like mystics of the church. And uh, right up there is St. Patrick uh, ministered in like, what is it, like 300 and something? It was like late 300s. And... Uh, you know, so it's hard, obviously, after all these years to track down tons of information on him. But thankfully, there were uh, a few things that he wrote himself and a few doc, uh, I was gonna say documentaries, but documents or biographies <laughs> on him that came out within yeah. a couple of centuries of his life and stuff. And so, yeah, anyway, um, what I, yeah, yeah. You want to say something? yeah, we definitely can get a gist for who he was based on the secondhand accounts. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, 
and it definitely a an essence. Yeah, like any of the saints, you know, it's uh, you gotta sort through it a bit. But some <laughs> of the things that we have for sure seen uh, from the life of Saint Patrick is number one, <laughs> opinions. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> something, that's something else. Uh, <laughs> no, Saint Patrick was. Big into power encounters. That's one. Um, just his boldness. Like he, uh, he would, you know, he he wasn't born in Ireland, and yet he went to this completely uh, foreign land, where it looks like initially he was uh, sold into slavery, um, but then he somehow got out of slavery miraculously by the hand of God, went uh, back to England and back to Europe. And then eventually returned to Ireland with just this boldness in his heart to to see the whole country come to Jesus. And so, you know, he's the he's the patron saint of Ireland um, and saw that nation like uh, along with a few others that don't get as much credit, but really saw a whole nation turn to God and uh, so many cool power encounters, so many cool miracles. And so, um, yeah, what what else do you do? do you we summarize i don't know well yeah i just to add to what you're saying i actually saw that he was he he was first he first came into ireland in as a slave right and then he and then and then he got free and it was gone for a long time and then he came back to where he was a slave yeah like it's pretty awesome to do ministry <laughs> and yeah. he would he would he would say they they had this thing that they said about him is probably you know it, it could have been true which is awesome but he he they said he preached so patiently mm-hmm. that he would plant his walking stick oh yeah made out of ash wood in the ground and by the time he was done preaching so patiently it had stuck into the ground and it had begun to sprung roots that's cool so that that that's that cool. I think epitomizes like Saint Patrick because it's like he was he was a he was a naturalist of sorts, like kind of like Saint Francis. He was he was very in tune with nature. He was a very um, he was a very he was he's a man of like he was pastoral, but he was a man of like solitude and nature as well as you see with some of these. And um, he was just like that patient, uh, silent uh, miracle worker. Like, uh, people would just come to witness his presence like that, you know? So, uh... That is so true, bro. Yeah, the, the animals and the plants and the trees and stuff. He was really big into that, you know? They, he had the whole the whole thing with the... the You know, he was he's very into practical, like I said, pastoral earlier, but he's also into practical lessons, practical theology. Um, he, you know, his... <coughs> his classic teaching was, you know, someone would ask him how can uh how can god be three three different people but the same god and then he would he would pluck a clover out of the ground and he would he would say how many leaves does it have and they would say well it has one leaf but three and he said that's that's what god is oh yeah like the old shamrock thing. The shamrock thing yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what i was going to point out too he's extremely trinitarian one of the earliest oh, yeah, like, yeah. clear voices <laughs> in trinitarian uh theology <laughs> which is so awesome because uh you know um the early, you know, a few hundred years of the church, they were really getting clarity on what what was the important things that Jesus taught and that Paul taught, and like what were the, you know, some of the foundations of the of the faith. And uh, yeah, like you said, you know, using the shamrock and just continually talking about the Trinity, um, and that's still seen today as a strong point in in Irish uh, history is just that Trinitarian life, and even in their artwork, and uh, and so much of that influence is still there. But um, I thought maybe we could read through a few stories and then give our comments. Um, how many of you love stories? Just raise your hand out there. Uh, there's a <laughs> lot of good insights in the uh, in the stories, um, the biographies of Saint, of Saint Patrick. And so I'm just going to read some of this is long. I wrote some of this out, but because there's so many power encounters, and that's what most of these are. Um, it's just so many cool things. I, I think it's a it's a time to uh, embrace power encounter power release like we're seeing you know a, a pandemic right now this is recorded during the covid 
crisis. And if you're watching this, man, I think you can really gain a lot from this and just releasing the power of God, even if it's just over your own life and your own household to see uh, just massive protection from all ills of this world. But let's check this out and see. There's some inspirational <laughs> stuff in here. Not least of all anxiety. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Um, okay. On Easter Day, when the kings and princes and druids were at table with La Guir, for this was their greatest feast day, eating and drinking wine in the palace of Terra, some of them talking and others thinking about things that had happened. Holy Patrick, with only five companions, entered through closed doors as we read about Christ in order to vindicate and preach the holy faith at Terra before all nations. As he entered the banquet hall of Terra, none of them rose to welcome him except only one man, Dubhatch Maku Ligur, an excellent poet. With him was then in that place a young poet named Fiak, so I'm butchering these names, I'm sure, who afterwards became a renowned bishop whose relics were revered in Slibde. This dupe talk, as I have said, alone <laughs> among the pagans rose in honor of Holy Patrick and let the holy man blessed him. And he was the first on that day to believe in God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. When the pagans had perceived Patrick, they asked him to come eat with them in order to put him to the test, as I will relate. He, however, knowing what was to come, did not refuse to eat. So first of all, he walks in through the doors like Jesus in his resurrected day. Dude, there's a lot of whack. Doesn't even, you don't even need doors. Holy Spirit. Anyway. <laughs> now, while they were all eating, the Druid Luchet Mael, who had taken part in the conflict on the holy previous night, was anxious even on that day. Now that his colleague had perished to fight against Holy Patrick. And as he started, he put a drop of poison from his cup into the goblet of Patrick. Uh-oh. Well, the others looked on in order to find out what Patrick would do. When Holy Patrick saw the kind of test to which he was being subjected, he blessed his goblet in the sight of all, and the liquor froze like ice. Then he turned his goblet upside down, and only the drop with the druid had added fell out. <laughs> and he blessed the goblet again. The liquor resumed its natural state, and they were all greatly astonished. After a short while, the druid said, Let us work miracles in this vast plain. And Patrick replied, saying, What sort of miracles? And the druid said, Let us bring snow over the land. And Patrick said, I do not want to bring anything. I do not want to bring about anything against God's will. And the druid said, I shall bring it about in the sight of all. Then uttering some spells, he brought snow, reaching up as far as a man's belt over the entire plain. And all saw this and were astonished. And the holy man uh, said, All right, we see this. Remove it now. And the druid said, Until this hour tomorrow, I cannot remove it. And the holy man said, You can do evil and cannot do good? Not so I. Then he blessed the plain all around, and in no time, without rain or mist or wind, the snow vanished, and the crowds cheered and were greatly astonished and touched in their hearts. And a little later, the druid, through the invocation of demons, brought a thick fog over the land as a sign, i.e. miracle. And the people muttered angrily, and the holy man said, Remove the fog. But again, the other was not able to do so. The holy man, however, the holy man, here's Patrick, we haven't figured that out. However, prayed and blessed the place, and the fog was dispelled at once, and the sun shone again, and all the people cheered and gave thanks. After this contest between the Druid and Patrick in the king's presence, the king said to them, Cast your books into the water, and he whose books remain unharmed, him we shall adore. Patrick answered, I will do so. But the Druid said, I do not want to undergo a test of water with him, for water is a god of his. Uh, he had heard, no doubt, that Patrick baptized with water. And the king replied, Agree to ordeal by fire, then. And Patrick said, I am ready to do so. But the druid did not want to, and said, This man worships every second year in turn now water, and now fire is his god. So the, And the holy man said, Not so, but you yourself and one of the boys in my service together with you shall go into a divided enclosed house, and you shall wear my garment, and my boy shall wear yours. And so you two together shall be set on fire and judged in the presence of the highest. And this plan was accepted. And a house was built for them, half of green wood and half of dry wood. And the druid was placed in the green part of the house, and one of Holy Patrick's boys, Benenius by name, wearing the druid's garb in its dry part. 
Then the house was closed from the outside, and in the presence of the whole crowd, it was set on fire. Wow. And in that hour, it so happened that through the prayer of Patrick, that the flame of fire consumed the druid together with the green half of the house, and nothing was left intact except the chasuble of holy Patrick, which the fire did not touch. The other hand, happy Beninius and the dry half of the house experienced what has been said of the three young men, uh, you know, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The fire did not even touch him and brought neither pain nor discomfort. Only the garb of the Druid, which he had donned, was burnt in accordance with God's will. And the king's anger was aroused against Patrick because of the death of his Druid. And he was on the point of attacking him, wishing to take his life. But God held him back. For at the prayer and the word of Patrick, the wrath of God descended upon the impious people, and many of them died. And holy Patrick said to the king, If you do not believe now, you shall die at once, for the wrath of God has come down upon your head. And the king was in great fear, his heart trembling, and so was his entire city. Hallelujah. So anyway, that's a story. I'm going to read one more. Um, shakalaka. I shall not, this is from his biography, it says, I shall not pass over in silence a miraculous deed of Patrick's. News have been brought to him of a wicked act by a certain British king named Cortic, an ill-natured and cruel ruler. He had no equal as a persecutor and murderer of Christians. Patrick tried to call him back to the way of truth by a letter, but he scorned its salutary exhortations. When this was reported to Patrick, he prayed to the Lord and said, My God, if it is possible, expel this godly man from this world and from the next. Not much time had elapsed after this when Cortic heard somebody recite a poem saying that he should abandon his royal seat, and all the men who were dearest to him chimed in. Suddenly, before their eyes, in the middle of a public place, he was ignominiously changed into a fox went off and since that day and hour like water that flows away was never seen again <laughs> anyway that's probably enough of those for now but there's so many power encounter stories like this in the biographies of saint patrick stuff that he was walking in and i do we think maybe a little bit of it was exaggerated as in many of these saint uh, stories probably some of it but there's so many stories in here that even over you know the years, uh, I mean, how much of that is really true? I my spirit resonates that a lot of it is probably true, and uh, how crazy is that, man? Um, now, in in reading back, I mean, I don't know some of the the things that I get out of it is, I mean, obviously like uh, signs and wonders were so normal in his life. I think that's amazing. I think that's something we drink from now and just continue to partake. That we can literally. Uh, you know, walk in some of this stuff where most Christians are kind of still like, you know, uh, a little afraid to pray for their buddy who has a cold or something, lay hands on somebody. St. Patrick is freaking, you know, changing snow, ma making snow disappear, fogs, you know, turning people into foxes and, uh, you know, transforming nations. So I think there's some massive, massive glory that we need to like consider that's in us. Um, <laughs> some of the negative stuff I, I I I think I don't think we need to embrace uh like all of the hellfire and like you know cast them from the earth or you know a lot of the times in Patrick's power encounters people would die or burn up with fire like the one you read about <laughs> like I think we could do you know so many uh compassionate miracles um and though like I I have no fear of like you know if if uh God wants to do something, you know, I, I don't want to put God in a box, but I think, you know, as we know of our father, he's so compassionate and so loving. And, and so I think that's something like over the centuries, we, we want to, uh, you know, become crazy power encounter folks, but not like, uh, these like guys that everyone's just terrified of, you know, <laughs> I don't know. You got any yeah. comments on these stories and stuff? That's good. The one thing I thought of was, um, how much more touched and affected the people were by the restoration than they were by the 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 first miracle itself so like they were they were not that affected by the snow and if anything negatively affected but then they they were extremely touched in a positive way when he made the snow go away and i just i guess for me it was like i was just feeling that reality I guess I was getting a revelation while you're reading that it's like people just 
Yeah, because it, because it, it, in one sense you could see it as like a battle between the two of them where they were right where they were equals, but but in a more real sense you could start to see how the miracle that Patrick did affected the people because it was a miracle of restoration. Like yeah, that's good. He didn't he didn't want to do something that was going to cause you know damage, but he was also able to restore that damage and like the the miracles of restoration are are you know have a certain kind of effect on people's hearts like because it's not just the the astoundingness of the signs and wonders but it's also like the sort of lasting impact that it has on the heart of the people well doesn't it say there's that quote where he says that you can do that you can do evil but you can't do good exactly you know and there's you know there's demonic power that can you know can demonstrate signs and wonders but it's only like dark stuff yeah yeah it was just interesting to see how people were were dramatically affected by by patrick's undoing of it you know by patrick's undoing of what the, the druid did because it was like you know, he the druid showed some some sort of like extraordinary sign and wonder, but the sign and wonder that actually affected people was, you know, the rest with the restorative, the I think restorative it's a really demonstration. Good point. That's a really good point too, because you see it right here in the story. It's like when we read this, we might be like, "Wow, you know, uh, God burned up this one guy, and like this other guy died from the wrath of God." But like <laughs> even in the same story, it's like. You know, these guys are recognizing, like, to do good is so much more glorious than any of these, like, things that they would call evil. Like, even they recognize the, you know, bringing snow over everybody is just straight up evil. <laughs> Especially this time of year, but anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you have any other thoughts I was going to... No, let's get on to that thing there. Well, so I wanted to just mention one other thing. It was cool. Yeah. He turns the one guy into a fox, right? That's pretty drunk. <laughs> Which I thought was cool, too, because he kind of threatened him, like, to cast him from this world. But uh, he just turned him into a fox. So I think that's actually kind of... That was kind of kind of him. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, how many of you out there are familiar with the story of when... Uh, St. Patrick's and his men were confronted and they were uh, going to be attacked by one of these Druid kings and rulers uh, because, it, you know, he was t he was literally transforming a nation. Um, he was going from place to place through signs and wonders, like taking on the different kings and rulers of those areas. And so when he would come to a, a new area, the kings and the rulers were like, no, this guy, you know, get him out of here. We're, we'll kill him if need be. But you remember the story where... Um, you know that Patrick's moving into a new place, at, and he'd been confronting the, the the kings and rulers through signs and wonders, and they go to kill him. And he and his men, uh, it says that they transformed into, or well, actually, it says all of a sudden the king and and the king's men could not find Patrick and Patrick's men, and all they saw there were a herd of deer. All they could find, and it's literally like the thing where he transformed the guy into a fox. I think these guys literally shape shifted into deers, <laughs> and that's that's what always been one of my favorite stories. It's like, dude, do we have any clue the glory that we're walking in, guys? You know, do we have any idea the mm. stuff that, uh, the like, free. yeah, the free gift of God in Christ that is ours to experience? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like a story like that is so drunk and um there is a prayer that i printed out it's called saint patrick's breastplate which uh it's also called uh something to do with deer i can't remember the name of it oh i didn't see that the i don't know whatever it's called there's different names for it right yeah and there's songs where they sing this well this was supposedly the prayer as the deer as the deer panteth for the water brooks uh they say this is the prayer that St. Patrick and his men prayed be before they were transformed into deer. And so, <laughs> and I can't remember where this one came from, but I, I think this might even be from St. Patrick's own confessions. I could be wrong, but uh, I want to read some of this out and you can just let this bask over you. We're just going to bask in this reality because there's actually some really good Trinitarian glory in this prayer. 
and uh, maybe you'll just manifest as a fawn in your heart, of course. Uh, let's try to read. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one, the and the one in three, I bind this day to me forever by power of faith, Christ's incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his death on the cross for my salvation, his bursting from the spiced tomb, his riding up the heavenly way, his coming at the day of doom. I bind unto myself today. I bind unto myself the power of the great love of the cherubim, the sweet well done in judgment hour, the service of the seraphim. Obviously, this is poetically translated to rhyme and such, but it's stronger that way. Anyways. Anyway, the service of the seraphim, <laughs> confessor's faith, apostle's word, the patriarch's prayers, the prophet's scrolls, all good deeds done unto the Lord and purity of virgin souls. I bind unto myself today the virtues of the starlit heaven, the glorious sun's life-giving ray, the whiteness of the moon at even, the flashing of the lightning free, the whirling winds tempestuous shocks, the stable earth, the deep salt sea around the old eternal rocks. I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead. His eye to watch, his might to stay, his ear to hearken to my need, the wisdom of my God to teach, his hand to guide, his shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, his heavenly host to be my guard. Against the demon snares of sin, the vice that gives temptation force, the natural lust that war within. I oh, can cut that line out. But... <laughs> the hostile men that mar my course. Or few or many, far or nigh, in every place and in all hours, against their fierce hostility, I bind to me your holy powers. Mm. Mm. Against all mm. Satan's spells and wiles, against false words yeah. of heresy, against the knowledge that defiles, against the heart's idolatry, against the wizard's evil craft. <laughs> Against the death wound and the burning, the choking wave and the poison shaft, protect me, Christ, till thy returning. Hallelujah. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three of whom all nature hath creation, eternal <laughs> father, spirit, word, Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Amen. I don't know what else can be said after that. Thank you guys for tuning in. Let's just take one more big drink from the glory that was on St. Patrick. <laughs> Whatever he's walking in, we can walk in. We have the same Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Thanks for listening to the High on God podcast with Matthew Spinks and Zachary Paul Pratt. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the show and check out the accompanying YouTube blog where we'll have short guided meditations on the glory of Jesus, as well as additional random coverage and updates from the God High. Also, if you believe in the message we're putting out to the world, consider donating or becoming a monthly partner at www.thefirehouseprojects.com slash donate so that we can spread the authentic, inebriating good news of Jesus. Alrighty then, until next time, stay high on the supply inside that never runs dry, Jesus Christ.